Kenora MP Eric Molilo joins us for a weekly update on what's happening with COVID-19 and everything across Western and Northern Ontario. It's James with Net News Ledger. It is the 22nd of January. We've got Eric Malilo from Kenora joining us by Zoom. Eric, welcome to Net News Ledger again. It's great to be back. Thank you. We have a week with um, slowly Ontario is going to be opening up again. We've got uh, a meeting for the Northwestern Ontario Municipal Group. Fading in. What do our readers and viewers need to know? What's going on that they are going to go, I need to know this, this week? Yeah, I, I had a really good discussion with uh, uh, with municipal leaders from across the district at KDMA this week. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of common concerns from, from housing to uh, healthcare uh, access in the north, and and the one thing that I, I I'd say is my biggest takeaway from uh, the, the discussion I had uh, at the conference was that the federal government needs to do more to support our municipalities and support uh, communities in northwestern Ontario, whether it's uh, working directly with the municipalities or or looking for uh, new partnerships with the province. There's really a number of ways uh, that. Uh, uh, that we feel uh, that our region feels we need to be uh, better supported by the federal government. So I appreciated the discussions uh, that I had this week, and I'm looking forward to getting to Ottawa to uh, to advocate for that. This is an issue that seems to be, Eric, hitting hard across our region, uh, especially this winter. The roads have been closed more often than usual, it seems. There's been a lot of collisions, especially between from Manitoba, Kenora, into Kenora and then Kenora, especially into Vermilion Bay. And it's got people concerned about what's gonna be in their stores. Federally, the, the vaccine um, issues with truckers from the United States is creating a lot of noise as well this week. Absolutely, the, uh, the vaccine mandate for uh, transport truck drivers is something that's really going to have a number of uh, negative, uh, negative consequences. It's something that uh, our uh, our party and the opposition federally is is opposed to and uh, and is pushing back on the government uh, for that policy. I mean, transport drivers were were exempt from uh, early uh, border restrictions during the pandemic because they are essential and they remain essential. Yet, uh, the policy that's been brought forward um, by the federal government will uh, only limit the amount of drivers on the road and and frankly will impact businesses uh, and consumers in Canada. Uh, Canadian companies are going to have difficulty getting their um, uh, their product uh, to market to the United States. And, and conversely, uh, with fewer items being able to get into the country uh, as well, uh, we'll we're, we're definitely going to see some supply shortages. And I think uh, uh, at a time when our supply chains are already uh, pretty weak. Um, we were seeing some shortages in, in grocery store, stores already across the country. This is something that's just going to add to that. It's going to add to the inflation and the, and the rising cost of living for everyone. So uh, we're, we're in definitely definitely in an economic crisis in terms of inflation and, and, and the supply chains, and this policy is only going to make it worse. That's, that's one that, it, and I think a lot of people are hitting not only a, a portion of COVID fatigue, but COVID frustration as well. You know, everything we do, everything we're trying, and we keep getting right back to, to square one, like we are right now with, you know, sur surging numbers from Omicron and no end in sight. And, you know, that's affecting the business community, especially small to medium-sized businesses, because without good leadership coming forward, it's really hard to plan. Absolutely. That, that leadership needs to be there and it needs to be, at the federal level, I, I think I've said uh, in, in previously uh, in, in some of my comments and in the house that um, we have, I believe we have the tools available to to better deal with this pandemic, to ensure everyone is, uh, is safe and, and protected, but that we can keep our economy going, we can keep our small businesses uh, going uh, with vaccines, with rapid tests, masking, everything that we've learned about this uh, so far. But the federal government needs to be there to to uh, support that. We're seeing delays in getting rapid tests and PPE into the country. We're seeing um, a, a mix up of information and, and some, uh, I think some confusing guidelines coming from the federal government. So uh, the reason that we're sort of in this state of perpetual lockdowns is, is really a um, uh, really a reflection of, of the failed federal policies. I'm, I'm finding it interesting right now. And you look over to Great Britain where COVID numbers have been massive. 
and yet the government is literally getting rid of max, mask mandates and opening things up. What do you think the contrast is? Yeah, it is interesting. And I, I mean, I don't know enough uh, information specifically about uh, how you, the UK came to that decision, but uh, I think something that is um, different between uh, that jurisdiction and ours is that it seems like the uh, the government is releasing a lot more information to the public. Uh, there, there's still a number of decisions uh, and being made uh, and a number of um, projections coming out of the federal government based on science and data that uh, Canadians don't have access to. We've been asking for a, a number of months uh, for the federal government to release data uh, to help justify some of their uh, uh, border decisions, some of their vaccine mandate decisions for uh, for the workplace or for transport drivers. Uh, and we haven't been able to receive that. And I think that that's, that's part of the frustration is that uh, everyone is prepared to buy into this, uh, but they need to know what, what the end goal is and, uh, and what information is driving it. That's, that's one of the ones, you know, we keep hearing we're making decisions based on the science. Well, that information is the science. And even though a lot of Canadians might not understand all of the science, I'm sure that a lot of Canadians just want to be able to look at the numbers themselves so that they can agree with what's going on. Absolutely. And sort of have a sense of... Um sort of a sense of security for maybe lack of a better term, but a bit of an understanding of, of how these decisions are being made and, and really just some transparency from the government, especially when uh, when regulations change, when opinions change from the federal government. Um, you know, it, it, I think it's really important uh, that, that Canadians know why that change has been made. And, and frankly, I think it would be more beneficial for the government as well. So uh, I've been uh, quite confused and quite puzzled as to why uh, they've been reluctant to release some of this data. It's, it's always interesting times. And, you know, we've watched this with, with COVID. With Omicron, we've been covering some of the information out from the World Health Organization. And, you know, watching the numbers here. And one of the ones that puzzled me is finding a, a government website, which was Defense Research, which advises the Canadian military globally on COVID numbers. But that website comes up with all these projections for around the world, including all of Canadian communities and regions, and yet it doesn't advise the Canadian government. And I found that really confusing, and I still don't have an answer as to why that is. Yeah, and, and frankly, I don't have an answer uh, either, James. It's, it's one of those uh, examples, frustrating examples, that I think shows the uncoordinated, uncoordinated response we've had uh, at the federal level, different departments, uh, so sort of going their own ways and uh, and different information being distributed depending who you talk to. So, um, you know, that just, I think, speaks to the need for a, a much more coordinated uh, response. Uh, that, that to me, that example is something that we might have expected in the early days of this pandemic when nobody knew what was going on. But, uh, you know, we're well over a year, you know, two years into this, and, uh, and we're still seeing a, a mixed messaging from the federal government. I think that's just unacceptable. Uh, a message for the uh, Kenora riding. Yeah, as, as mentioned um, uh, off the top, you know, I had a great discussion with uh, KDMA uh, leaders uh, this last week. And, um, you know, I, I really heard loud and clear that the federal government needs to be there, whether it's ensuring that uh, we're going to be increasing healthcare transfers to better support uh, northern communities, whether it's uh, greater partnerships on infrastructure like our highways and supporting uh, the critical infrastructure we need in northern Ontario. So I appreciated those discussions and I'm looking forward to getting to Ottawa next week and, uh, and being our voice for that. And I'm looking forward to talking to you next Saturday so that we can share what happened. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. Take care.